These seemingly common, innocuous black spheres are very different from one another. One of them bounces and the other one doesn't. This one represents a nearly perfectly inelastic collision in which the two objects stick to each other. This sphere sticks to the earth. This one bounces. And so it represents, as close as we can get, to a perfectly elastic collision. If it were perfectly elastic, how high would it go? The drop height? The drop height. It would go back up to the drop height. And you guys have looked at that a little bit already. But here's another example of a perfectly elastic collision. We can represent this collision like this. Well, let's pretend that just one of them was moving initially, and we have mass one, can you see that? Is that okay? We'd have mass one times the initial velocity. We'll just write the initial velocity, pretending one of them was moving. And then we've got mass one times the final velocity of thing one, plus mass two times the final velocity of, how do I want to write this? Final velocity of thing two like that. Okay, so this says that one of those students was moving initially and the other one happened to be at rest. So we've got zero for the momentum on that side. This statement simply comes from PI is PF. And you see that? It's working out for you? Okay, good. So this is the conservation of momentum and the other thing that's true in only perfectly elastic collisions, the other thing that's true is that energy is conserved. So in that case, we can also say that, well, I guess I'm going to say mi i is mi f. So let's identify the energy that we have initially. If one object is moving and the other object is still, we've got 1 half mass 1 times v naught squared. That's the total energy initially. And the final energy initially is some energy from uh, thing 1, some energy from thing 2. So let's write that out. 1 half m1 times v1 final Four plus one half and two times v two final score. <clears throat> Our book then goes on to say it is a trivial algebra problem to substitute these equations into each other and find some equations for the final velocities in terms of the masses and the initial velocity. So I want to show you just what the book means by trivial. My intention is to solve this equation for v1 final, for instance and plug it into here and see what we get. We might find that it is not quite trivial. Would you scan this direction just a little bit? We're gonna find that uh, if we solve for V1 final in this equation, I'm going to get M1 times V naught minus M2 times V2 final, and the whole thing will be divided by M2. Now I take this, and I plug it into her, and I get one half m1 times v naught squared equals one half m1 times, uh oh, this should not be divided by m2, it should be divided by m1, right? Because I'm solving it for v1. Okay, good. So now I've got this, and I'm going to plug it in, but I have to score it. So let's look at the denominator first. The denominator is m1 squared, and the numerator is going to be this term squared plus that term squared minus two times the product of those guys. So we'll say m1 squared v naught squared. We don't need to have a vector hat anymore on this because we're squaring it, and so it's just going to be a magnitude. And then we'll get, uh, ooh, what do we have here? We're going to add on m2 squared times v2 final squared, and then we're going to subtract 2 times m1 times m2 times v0 times v2 final. Oh my goodness. Let us continue. And we get then, there's another vector hat right here, so I guess this is strictly speaking a dot product, but we're going to pretend that that doesn't exist. And then we have the final term, which is plus one half m2 v2 final square. Wow, can you see all that stuff? So we have to take this equation and combine terms until it pretties up a little bit. So let's do that division. We'll get one half m1. I'm just rewriting the left side. And we want to spread this out a little bit. I'm going to get one half 
Oh man, we've got three m1s in this first term in the numerator and one in the denominator. So it's one half m1, oh we've got two in the denominator, so it's one half m1 times v naught square. And then on the uh, next term, We've got two m1s in the denominator and one m1 in the numerator. So it's plus one half m1. It's going to be m2 square divided by m1. And then we have to multiply that by v2 final square. And then I have to, to subtract this nastiness over here. I've got an m1 here and m1 here, and I've got two m1s in the denominator, so those are all gone. So this is going to be minus m2 times v0 times v2 final, and then I add on this final term one half m2 v2 final square. What do you see? What can we do here? This is the same as that. So these guys are on opposite sides and they'll cancel out. And Oh man, we've got ourselves a little bit of a mess. Let us multiply by m1 to get this a little bit cleaner. Yeah, we've got an m2 there, we've got an m2 there, okay. Oh, this is, this is interesting. Now let's multiply by m1 and divide by v2 final, because v2 final appears in all of those terms. So I'm gonna say zero equals one half m2 square times v2 final minus m2 times m1 and we're dividing by v2 final right so we have to say times v naught and then I'm going to subtract uh, we're dividing by v2 final and and multiplying by m1, so I'm going to have m1, we got a 1 half, m1, m2, v2, final. Okay? This is looking a lot better right now. We're trying to solve this for v2 final. So let's get all the v2 finals on one side and start seeing what we have. v2 final appears here and here. We'll put it over on the left side. I'll get 1 half m1, m2, v2 final, minus 1 half m2 for v2 final, equals negative m1, m2, v0. Oh man, we're getting better. Sam, how you doing? Good. Good. If I uh, go over here, will you pan over for me? Yeah. Thank you. This is the conservation momentum and the conservation of energy together giving us a relationship for final velocity and initial velocity. So my plan is to factor out V2 final, and I will say V2 final is equal to, well, let's see, we're gonna have this stuff on the left side, negative M1, M2 over V0, divided by all the stuff that was factored right here. So that's a one half M1, M2 minus one half M2 square, and that's our answer. Does it get prettier? I think it probably does. We can pretty that up a little bit. We multiply by two over two, which is one, and we got M2s all over the place also, so I'm going to also multiply by one over M2, one over M2. You see how there are just too many M2s there? <clears throat> so I'm going to get negative 2 times M1 V0 divided by, well these halves are gone now, and I'm supposed to divide by M2, so I'll get M1 minus M2. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's write it one more time. We'll say that the final velocity of the object 2 is going to be negative 2 times m1 divided by m1 minus m2 times the initial velocity. Now remember that this, this is not symmetric in the masses of the two things. So only one of them was moving initially. The mass of thing one is in the numerator because thing one was the thing that was initially moving. 
Let's check with the book to make sure that I haven't gone absolutely crazy. It looks like there is a mistake somewhere. Great. Okay, I found my mistake after looking at this for a while. When I went from this line to this line, I'll tell you why you know I put a minus sign here, and this should be a plus sign. Notice I've got a plus sign here, I've got a minus sign here, and I've got a minus sign here where I had a plus sign previously. So I'm going to make this positive. I'm going to chase through and figure out what that means. This is a term that I moved to the left side. So I need it positive, and it should in fact be negative. This term appears right here on the left side of the next line. So it needs to be right there, it needs to be negative. And then I've got this wonderful situation where everything is negative. So if I carry that over to here, then I'm going to have, well, I'll pan the camera a little bit more. If I carry that situation over to right there, I've got a minus sign here and a minus sign here, and all the minus signs cancel out. So this is, in fact, 2 times m1 over m1 plus m2 times v0. This equation makes a lot of sense. It says that if mass 1 is the thing that's moving and hitting mass 2, then this is how we figure out how fast mass 2 is going. And finding mass 1 is a simple step from there. In fact, <clears throat> you can just write down, plugging it into the other equation, you can write down V1 final, what it would be. And we'll look at that in a moment. So the very last equation that we need is simply M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2. And I'm not going to show that word. Times v. These two equations show you the final velocity of thing 1 and the final velocity of thing 2 after collision where thing 1 is moving and hitting thing 2.